Welcome to today's Global Connections television program. I'm Bill Miller. The main purpose of this show is to promote a discussion of major international issues such as war and peace, economic development, climate change, and human rights that impact people worldwide. New knowledge will inspire, involve, and motivate all of us to better deal with these challenges and to help create a better world. Today's program will focus on the United Nations Global Compact, which is working with thousands of private sector businesses to enhance labor and human rights, promote sustainable development, and combat corruption. Welcome back to our program. Today we're taking a look at the United Nations Global Compact, a very unique but a very important operation within the United Nations. My guest today is an expert on the Global Compact. My guest today is Ms. Lisa Kingo. Ms. Lisa Kingo is the Executive Director of the United Nations Global Compact. Ms. Kingo, a Danish national, previously was Executive Vice President for Novo Nordisk. Lisa Kingo, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you, it's great to be here. I appreciate you being with me today. The UN Global Compact, let's just start off at the top. What exactly is the UN Global Compact? When was it formed and why was it formed? And basically, what's your mission? Uh, the UN Global Compact just celebrated it, its 15 years birthday. It was created in Davos in year, two, in year 2000 uh, by the former Secretary General, who felt that it was a good moment to form a compact between the UN and business to give business a more human face uh, in the globalization process that of course already started back then. So the idea with the compact was to help companies um, run their business in a responsible way. So 10 principles were identified that all comes out of UN conventions and they deal with environment, social responsibility, labor, and anti-corruption. Exactly. Now, how many members, and a large number of your members are businesses, large and small, I guess, but you also have individual members. But how many members do you have, uh, basically, in each of those categories? Well, in total, we have 13,500 members. Uh, 8,500 are businesses, and the remaining 4,000 are various organizations, and they are all very important uh, participants of the compact. Uh, they come from 160 countries, and the businesses are both big and small. So we have huge diversity mm -hmm. and a, a wide breadth in the participants that uh, we have at the compact. Mm -hmm. So if we have viewers who may be CEOs of a small business or a large business and would like to participate in the global compact, can they go to your website, uh, unglobalcompact.org, and learn more about it? And can they become members? Yes, they can certainly become members. What it takes is that you go to our website. Um, the CEO of the company must submit a letter to the Secretary General committing to work according to the 10 principles, and then to submit a report to the UN once a year where the company lines out how they are working with the 10 principles, how they are improving, where they are facing dilemmas. And all these reports are then put on our website so anybody can go and have a look at specific companies, 
that are members and see how they are working with improving their business according to the 10 principles. Mm -hmm. And this is certainly a good example of corporate social responsibility uh, to help create a better world. Now, if the businesses do not live up to the standards that the global, co and this is a voluntary program, I might mention that I'm sure. It is. It is totally voluntary, but if they don't live up to the standards, then they are delisted, is that correct? Yes, I mean, over the first 15 years, we have delisted 5,500 companies due to the fact that they have not submitted their annual report. And we feel it's very important when companies volunteer to be a member of our initiative that they are actually committed and that they show and share the progress that they are doing every year. So the reporting compo component is really important and it's unique for the United Nations Global Compact. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the Davos Summit, Economic Summit, the World Economic Forum, and your agency came out of the 1999 Davos Summit. They recently, they recently concluded the Davos Summit. You were there, what were, uh, we will not dwell on too long, but what were one of the two of the main highlights that came out of that summit that would be helpful for us to think about today as we move forward to deal with many of these economic problems? Mm -hmm. One of the big themes at the Davos meeting this year was the new sustainable development goals that were adopter, adopted at the UN in September. Um, one of the goals, number 17, talks about partnerships and the importance of business and organizations partnering up to facilitate the goals. So we took the opportunity to organize a set of meetings mm -hmm. on the theme of partnerships between UN and business. We already have many such partnerships and they deliver enormous value uh, in all the local uh, countries where Global Compact has its local networks. So we wanted to increase and encourage that even more companies partner up with the UN uh, throughout the world. That's very, very important. And you mentioned the sustainable development, which is a critical uh, uh, issue for all of us because obviously we're all impacted by the environment and everything that happens to it. And of course, the UN had a major conference in Paris, just recently concluded in December of last year. What, uh, first off, was the Global Compact involved in that conference? And secondly, what came out of it that really is important for all of us to be aware of? Well, the UN Global Compact had the great pleasure of being the official organizer of the business events during COP21. So we organized a very important high-level meeting with the Secretary General, with John Kerry, with a number of our CEO participants, and also a full conference day for business where we had more than 600 business leaders. And we heard from many sources that the positive voice and energy from business for having a strong, clear agreement was actually a very important driver and motivator for all the people that had to negotiate the actual agreement. So I'm, I'm very happy to say that I think business really played an important role in mm -hmm. creating the end result. And from the UN Global Compact, our Caring for Climate program that we have been running since 2007 is the world's largest initiative for businesses. So we have more than 450 uh, companies from more than 160 countries. So it's mm -hmm. very global. Um, and these companies were really role models on carbon pricing, on responsible lobbying, on setting science-based targets, and I think role modeling how companies can really embed the climate change dilemmas in the way they run their business. Mm -hmm, exactly. Now, if companies are engaged in, let's say, very progressive best practices, if you will, dealing with climate change or promoting sustainable development or whatever it might be. Do you post these on your website? Are they available as to sort of best practices so that other groups can look at them? So here's what company X is doing and company Y. So why maybe we should try this yes. uh, to see if we can't yes. implement it. Do, yes. do you do that? We do that a lot. And it's one of the important roles that we are playing in 
uh, identifying role models in disseminating great stories and great uh, best practices on how companies can actually be responsible at the same time as also improving their business by taking a sustainability approach. So um, if you would have the time and go uh, and have a look at our website, you would see many examples from throughout the world, from big or from small companies on mm -hmm. how uh, companies are working with sustainability. And the new thing now for us will be to document and share how companies can work with the sustainable development goals and really use them as innovation and as platforms for uh, growth in their companies. Mm -hmm. So there are many possibilities and opportunities in the new sustainability goals. Exactly. And of course, our viewers can go to www.unglobalcompact.org and find much more information about what we're talking about today. You also, there, there's not only information about best practices, but we were talking about this before the show, you have a very interesting report, the Global Opportunity Report 2016, mm -hmm. and this is on your website also. Basically, what is the Global Opportunity Report 2016? Well, we spoke a little bit about Davos, and it is a tradition every year that a global risk report comes out of Davos, which is very respected and people look forward to it every year. But we thought from the Global Compact, from the House of Monday Morning, from the Norwegian Veritas in Oslo, that we wanted to add a new perspective, a positive perspective, a global opportunities report. Because we feel with the new SDG agenda, there are many risks in the world, but the important thing is to turn these risks into opportunities and to create a positive, innovative environment mm -hmm. where companies have the self-confidence to test out new solutions, new business models. We think we need positive energy to create a better world. Exactly. And of course, you're members and the, the businesses, I think you said about 8,500, something like that. And these are businesses in the United States and around the world who have to deal with these problems every day. We find more and more challenges, not only to individuals because of climate change changes that are taking place, but also to businesses. You read about Coca-Cola couldn't start a new plant in India because of the lack of water. You see desertification is taking. So these, these uh, sustainable development issues, climate change issues, are becoming more and more prominent. Do you find that more businesses r are realizing this and that they really want to be actively involved? I know 15, 20 years ago, probably a large mm. number of businesses didn't feel this way. But today, uh, that's changing quite dramatically, isn't it? It has changed dramatically <coughs> within the last 15 years, for example, where the Global Compact has been in existence. Uh, it started out with 40 founding members. Today, we are more than 13,000. Uh, and that's a very good illustration that many, many companies are realizing that there's a new reality for them out there. <coughs> the business of business isn't just business anymore. It's all about running a responsible business where you understand your responsibility towards the environment, towards employees, uh, towards uh, anti-corruption, and to really integrate that in the way the business is done. And also, um, put energy into liaising with the company's stakeholders, making sure that you understand the worries and the concerns of your stakeholder and, and take that seriously. Mm -hmm. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately financed, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections Television are solely those of the moderator and his guest. Our viewers are invited to check out the website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous shows. If you're interested in distributing our shows through PBS, Community Access Television, educational institutions, a website, or any other media outlet, please go to our website for more information. Global Connections Television is a public service that is provided at no cost. Today we're looking at the United Nations Global Compact, and my guest today is an expert on the Global Compact. My guest today is um, Ms. Lisa 
Kingo, and Ms. Kingo is the Executive Director of the United Nations Global Compact. Prior to the break, we were talking about climate change and how important it is because it affects basically all 7.3 billion people on planet Earth. And we could spend the whole rest of the program mm -hmm. on that, but you have three other really important issue areas that you deal with. And let's see if we can touch upon them very briefly. Uh, one is anti-corruption. What are some of your major anti-corruption activities and why is it so important to focus on this issue of corruption? Well, the issue of corruption has a major effect on our chance and opportunities to create a more sustainable world, just as climate change has. So it's really, really important as well. And we see corruption playing a negative role and being a negative force mm -hmm. throughout the world. So what we try to do at the UN Global Compact is to gather companies around our principles to provide guidelines and tools to engage companies in working with these tools in their businesses throughout the world. And as a very important area when we talk about corruption is education mm -hmm. to the employees in the company. So the compact has created a very smart uh, program that companies can adapt to their own business that is a learning system for employees. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be adapted to the company and the employees will have a certification uh, after having done the program. So we work in many different dimensions on the anti-corruption agenda. And we also partner with important organizations that are experts in this area, such as Transparency International. Mm -hmm. And we sense that the anti-corruption area continues to foster lots of interest among businesses throughout the world. So I think this is really an area where we will have to reinvent uh, ways of having good dilemma discussions, good dialogues in businesses, because the agenda keeps on taking new forms. Exactly. And do you find more and more businesses are more interested in developing these anti-corruption guidelines and to develop, raise their ethical standards within their businesses? Does that help their competition and really make th makes them more effective and improves their bottom line too, I'm sure, of profitability? It's, it certainly does. And I think uh, many companies understand really well that anti-corruption is an important part of the compact mm -hmm. principles but also an important part for their own compliance with legislation throughout the world. So there are many elements that encourage companies to avoiding uh, corruption in the way they operate. It's a very important part of securing uh, a good reputation for a company that the company can show that they are a force for good and they are not participating in undermining business practices. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's very, very important. Now, the uh, two other areas you're dealing with, and we'll try to get into them sh uh, briefly. The one is the focus on human rights, and that, uh, as the Office for the High Commissioner for Human Rights at the UN would say, if you're born, you have rights, human rights. Yes. <laughs> we automatically yes. receive them. We don't have to go to college to get no. them or high school or whatever it might be. We have them automatically. What are you doing in this area to try to focus attention with these various companies and also your individual memberships on the whole broad issue of human rights? Well, the UN Global Compact um, are helping to translate uh, UN conventions, UN principles, in a way that makes them more accessible to business. So for example, we have developed the children's principles, we have developed women's principles uh, that are sort of easy to follow guidelines for businesses that want to be active in the human rights agenda. And again, this is often something we do with other UN agencies, with NGOs, uh, facilitating better practices among companies, for example, on, on children's rights, on women's rights. And we will have a major event uh, in New York next month on the women's empowerment principles, to give an example, where we will have companies coming in from throughout the world, sharing their 
uh, experiences and their dilemmas in, in furthering these principles. Mm -hmm. You mentioned women. Of course, that's sustainable development goal number five, to empower women and to promote really equity amongst women and men yes. and to eliminate many barriers that are affecting women. How important is it to bring women into the equation, not only in the corporate world, but also into every area where there are challenges that exist for all of us, be it climate change, be it uh, human rights, be it uh, micro businesses, whatever it might be. How important is it to bring women into the picture? Well, one of my favorite books is called Half the Sky. And this book describes how much energy and prosperity and increased economy it would bring if half of the world's population, the women, were actually really brought into the economy, to the workplaces, to the centers of power in the world. So I think one of the really huge potentials that we are sitting on in the world is to releasing the energy that women can bring. And that's also what the women's empowerment principles are all about. Um, and there are so many positive things coming out of this and so many examples of also businesses uh, furthering women's opportunities to take the high level positions in, in companies that we should really encourage and follow. Exactly. Now, the fourth area you deal with is in labor rights. We talk about human rights, we talk about sustainable development, anti-corruption, but you also deal with labor rights. And when we think of labor rights, we, I think anyway, of collective bargaining, the right to bargain collectively, to be involved in a union if you would like to be involved in a union, that to have a safe working environment, to make sure you're paid fairly for uh, uh, your work uh, for a particular day or by the hour or however it might be. What, what are some of the issues that you're focusing on as far as labor rights? Well, I think all of us have a job mm -hmm. and go to a workplace every day and want to have a fair treatment since we are putting a lot of our energy and our lives into a workplace. So there are fundamental workers' rights like the ones that you are just mentioning but there are also rights around opportunities for women, uh, for better education, uh, for better conditions and for thriving better. So we are taking a sort of very holistic approach to what labor rights mean, but we are also working very closely with the ILO and the other very competent uh, organizations in this uh, space to really uh, further this agenda. And again, as I mentioned before, with the anti-corruption agenda, mm -hmm. the labor agenda keeps on taking new shapes and forms. So we are looking to innovate and to reinvent what good labor means all the time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, this whole issue of labor rights, it, it brings in so many other different areas or so many other different sub-issues. I guess it brings in like human trafficking, you have uh, drugs, the flow of drugs, just a variety of issues in yes. there. And so your companies are involved in all of these as far as trying to take, well, take these problems and to really reduce them and to hopefully to eliminate them. Yes, I mean, some of the principles that we have issued from the UN Global Compact helps companies focus in on what parts of these agendas would be important um, for, for companies. And some of the issues that are really coming up these days, the human uh, trafficking as an example, I mean, that hits both uh, the gender uh, agenda, but certainly also uh, the sustainable development goal number eight, that's mm -hmm. about having a safe workplace. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the great things about the new sustainable development goals is that they give us an opportunity to anchor all these important issues that are part of our world today and see them as part of a common agenda that the world community have just agreed in September. Exactly. Well, in our last 20 seconds, what do you see as your major challenge with the Global Compact? Well, we would like to help translate the sustainable business goals to businesses across the world. 
so that they are easy to understand, so that businesses can see the opportunities and the platforms for growth that is right there in front of them with the new SDGs. And then we would like to create a movement of responsible companies that through the new sustainable development goals want to contribute to creating the world that we all want. That is our ambition. So very important. Lisa Kingo, the Executive Director of the United Nations Global Compact, I want to thank you so very much for a very interesting and a very informative program. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.